Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 126 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about caching application data in ASP.NET. In parts 119 to 125 of the ASP.NET video tutorial, we discussed about caching web forms, caching multiple responses of web forms, fragment caching using user controls, caching multiple versions of user controls. If you haven't watched these videos, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. It is possible to store application data in the web server memory using the cache object so that the data can be retrieved faster. For example, let's say we have a stored procedure that takes 5 seconds to execute and return data. We can cache the data returned by this stored procedure within an ASP.NET web application using the cache object so that next time when we try to access the data, we can get it from the cache rather than reprocessing the stored procedure again. Let's see that in action. Let's flip to SQL Server Manager. Management Studio. I have TBL products table here and I have a stored procedure here called SP get products and if you look at the stored procedure it's pretty simple all it does is uh, select star from TBL products but before that we have this wait for delay now since this is a very small table and has got only four rows um, you know if I execute the select star from TBL products it's gonna execute in less than a second just to introduce some artificial query processing time I'm using this wait for delay here so wait for delay you know the first two zeros are the hours the next two zeros are minutes and the last two zeros are seconds so I am blocking the execution of this stored procedure by five seconds using this wait for delay to introduce some artificial query processing time so now if I execute the stored procedure it's going to take at least five seconds because we are blocking the execution for five seconds using this wait for delay here Okay, now let's see how to execute the stored procedure from within an ASP.NET web application and then we'll try and cache the data that, that is returned by this stored procedure. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have an ASP.NET web application project where we have this web form 1.aspx and at the moment the design is pretty simple. I have a button control, I have a grid view control and a label control. Okay, so if you look at the HTML, that's what you see here, a button control grid view and label control okay in the code behind file I have already written the ADO.NET code to retrieve you know to basically execute the stored procedure SP get products and return the data and if you look at that it's the um, simple ADO.NET code okay so if you're new to ADO.NET code I would strongly encourage you to watch the ADO.NET video tutorial where we discussed about uh, you know connecting the to the database and executing uh, commands and stored procedures. So basically, if you look at this here, we are using the configuration manager class to read, you know, the web.config connection string. So in web.config file, I have a connection string here, and the name of the connection string is DB connection string, which is basically pointing to my SQL Server local SQL Server database. So let's change the connection string to that, and then after we have the connection string, we are, you know, creating the SQL connection object creating a SQL data adapter object and we are specifying the stored procedure that we want to execute in this case SP get products uh, and this stored procedure will be executed using this connection object and then we are specifying the command type as stored procedure because this is a stored procedure that we are executing creating a data set here and then we are populating that data set with the results that we get back after we have the stored procedure executed and look at this the important thing to note here is that the return type of this method is a data set object and look at this finally we are returning the data set back so pretty simple straightforward ADO.NET code now let's say you know whatever data set that we get back by executing by calling this method we want to cache that data so how do we do that caching data itself is pretty straightforward all you need to do is use the cache object and then give it a key so I can give any meaningful key so here as we are storing products data I'm going to give it a key called products data and then you know we can simply assign our data set so we invoke this method and then whatever this method is going to return I am going to you know store in the cache object with this key okay that's it this is how we store you know basically the data in a cache now let's actually create a data set object let's call it DS and then let's assign whatever this method is returning to that data set and then let's use the data set 
you know to be stored in the cache all right now let's assign this data set to the grid view control so we have a grid view control with id gv products so i'm going to assign that data set as the data source for the grid view control so gv products dot data source is equal to data set and finally let's go ahead and invoke the data bind method and let's also say in the label I want to display the number of rows that we have in this data set so to retrieve the number of rows in the data set I use data set dot you know data set is nothing but a collection of tables and we know that this data set contains one table so data set dot tables of zero which returns the first table and within that I want the number of rows and then I can use the count property so let's convert that to string and let's say you know we have a label control again which displays you know a message to the end user so I'm gonna set the text for that label so label message dot text is equal to you know this line here will return the number of rows so I'm going to append that to you know hard-coded string basically saying rows retrieved okay so very simple all we have done so far is you know executed the stored procedure whatever data we have gotten back you know we are storing the data in a data set and then we are basically using caching the data set using this key products data and then we are setting the data set as the data source for the grid view control calling data bind and then displaying the number of rows that we have in that data table uh, in a label control okay so let's go ahead and run this actually we have this code in page load instead of that let's actually have this code in the button click event so on this web form one I have this button so when I click that button that's when I want to do this so I'm going to copy and paste that code there so let's run this application as you might expect the first time uh, you know when I click that button it's going to take uh, five seconds at least to execute that stored procedure okay because this stored procedure will take five seconds at least because of this wait for delay so the web form is still loading here once it loads up now look at this when I click this button look at that it is still processing processing it's going to take at least five seconds for that data uh, to be loaded into the grid view control so four rows retrieved now let's modify this code a little bit um, so that you know even if I click now again it's going to take five seconds again look at that it's still processing why because every time you click the button you're executing you know you're calling that method which in turn will execute that stored procedure and it's going to take always five uh, seconds to load instead of that let's say if I already have this data in this cache you know retrieve that from the cache rather than reprocessing the stored procedure every time and to do that so basically I'm saying if we will check okay is there if is if this cache object is null so I'm basically saying if cache of products data not equal to null okay if it's not equal to null then I want to retrieve data from the cache object else if it is null then we know that we don't have anything in the cache in which case we want to you know call this method execute the stored procedure retrieve the data uh, and then put the data in a cache object and then assign that as the data source for the grid view control so now here let's slightly change this me message since we are retrieving data from the database I'm going to say uh, you know whatever are the number of rows retrieved from database okay and then I'm going to copy this just to avoid uh, you know just to save some time in typing and paste it here and then we'll modify this so if cache of products data are not equal to null then what I want to do is basically I want to retrieve the data set from the cache object so instead of calling this method I'm going to retrieve that from the cache object so cache of products data now if you look at you know this cache object look at what it is returning back it is returning an object back but what are we expecting we are expecting a data set so I can typecast that using the typecast operator uh, to data set and then look at that what are we doing with the data set we don't have to put it in the cache because it's already there in the cache 
So I'm going to get rid of that line. We are simply uh, setting the data set as the data source calling data bind. And then we are displaying this message in the label. And here, let's say uh, whatever rows, you know, four rows retrieved from cache. Okay. Now another thing I want to do, I also want to, let's say, display the time it takes, you know, when it is retrieving from cache as opposed to, you know, the time it takes when we have to load it from the database. And to do that, I'm going to do a small trick here. So let's use a date time object, DT, let's call this start time. So when I click this button, I'm, I'm capturing what is the current date and time on the server. And to do that, I can simply use date time dot now. Okay, so this is going to return the current date and time when it is about to start processing this piece of code. So that's the start time. And similarly, let's go ahead and go ahead and compute the end time. So when, when the processing reaches here, we know that it has completed processing. So I'm gonna call this DT end time. That's the variable. Okay, now how do I find out the difference between you know start time and end time in seconds? It's pretty simple. Let's say end uh, total seconds, for example, or total time is equal to all we need to do is from the end time subtract the start time. So dt minus dt start time. And then we have a property called seconds. So when we subtract two dates, we have this property seconds, which returns you know the difference between that end time and start time in seconds. Convert that to string. Uh, basically, that's the integer. So let's store it in that variable. Okay. So now what I want to basically do here is look at this. We are already appending this message to the label here. Instead of that, let's use a string builder object build the message and then finally we'll set that as the text for the label and to do that i'm going to use system dot text string builder class is present in system dot text namespace and let's call this sp message as the name of the variable so new string builder and what i am going to do here is instead of assigning that message directed to the label, I'm going to append that to the string builder object. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, finally, here to the string builder object again, I'm going to append the time it took as well. So to the already existing message, I'm going to append, let's say for example, uh, let's put a full stop here, and a full stop here, and maybe a space there, and a space there, and then we'll append the, the number of seconds it took. So the total number of seconds is in this variable, so I'm going to take that, convert that to string, using to string, and then may, maybe we can say five seconds load time okay so now let's go ahead and run this and see what's going to happen let's rebuild the solution so if you look at this the code is pretty simple caching the data itself very straightforward all you need to do is use a key and then specify whatever data that you want to cache okay and obviously we are using the cache object for that okay uh, and basically here we are checking if the cache, you know, cache of products data is not null. Retrieve that products data from the cache object, type cached it to data set, store it in this variable, which is then set as the data source for the grid view control call data bind. And then here we are retrieving the number of rows that are present in that table. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this now. So control F5 to run the application. So when the web form loads up, you know, when we click the button for the first time, it's gonna execute the stored procedure and get the data from the database. Look at that, it's still processing. It's gonna take at least five seconds and we should be getting the data from the database. And we don't have the message there. That's basically because we haven't set that to the label. So let's go ahead and set that to the label. So LBL message dot text is equal to whatever is there in the string builder object. So string builder object dot to string. 
And if you're wondering why we are using string builder object, why can't I use a string object anytime we are modifying strings, you know, for performance reasons, it's always better to use string builder objects because strings of type string are immutable, whereas strings of type string builder are mutable. Uh, if you want to know the differences between, you know, string and string builder object, we have discussed about that in the C-sharp video tutorial. So please check that video. All right, now let's build the solution once again and run it. Okay, so the first time when we click the button, it should take at least five seconds to execute the stored procedure. Look at that. It's still processing. Okay, and in five seconds time, look at that, four rows retrieved from database. Look at that, that's the message. And five seconds load time. So it took five seconds load time. Now, when I click the button again, what's gonna happen? It, it, drop, it checks this here. Okay, if cache of product data not equal to null, that's true. So it will come here, retrieve the data from the cache, and then display that. So it has to be relatively faster. I click the button, look at that. Four rows retrieved from the cache, zero seconds load time. If you want to actually know the milliseconds as well, there is another property here. Instead of um, seconds, you can actually use dot total seconds. Okay, now let's run that. So total seconds actually returns a double. So let's convert that to be of double data type. And run this now. So let's build this once again. So now uh, when we click that button, it should show uh, the time including the milliseconds. So when I click the button, it's going to take at least five seconds this the first time so it has to execute the stored procedure look at that it actually took five seconds and that many milliseconds now if I click that again look at that it literally took less than a second I mean zero seconds okay and look at the message four rows retrieved from cache so no matter how many times you click now it's gonna load uh, you know within a very less time because we already have the data in cache we don't have to re-execute the stored procedure so our application is going to perform better so in this video, we discussed about storing application data in cache using direct assignment. That is, I have a cache key and then I'm assigning data to that key. Okay, in our next video, we'll discuss about other options that are available to store data in the cache object. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.